Hello, Rekman87, and welcome back to Combat Mission Cold War, where today we're kicking off something a little bit different. We'll have an unusual affair against the AI, so we're going to be kicking off a series which is looking at a PvP game that I've recently been playing. So, the premise for this series is going to be a turn-by-turn -turn replay, where I do my best to keep each turn's video pretty short, so not to drag it out too much, but I do think it is interesting to see these things as they unfold and for me one of the key parts of commission is around that decision making on a turn by turn basis as well as that overarching strategy and also i will happily admit because uh, i still have a big grudge against video editing and have many projects which are still sitting on the shelf wait for me to finally spend a large amount of time chopping and pasting things together but those are for another day so this video is going to cover general setup and force selection and initial strategy and then videos thereafter will cover each turn by turn. So this is going to be a sort of Cold War head to head. I will be taking the force of Americans and it's going to be a medium sized meeting engagement. So without further ado, let's go have a quick look at the forces I've decided to play with. Okay, so let's talk unit selection. So obviously I'm rebuilding this after the fact, but I have set up to be the same uh, medium size. I believe the same rarity. I don't think it's going to impact what we end up with, but I wanted to kind of talk through uh, why I ended up with what I did end up with. And, and that's why I'm in this less than graphically appealing view. So the first thing I did, I came into it and I, and I thought, well, I, I, fairly standard. I thought, let's get, build a combined armed force. You know, let's get some infantry support, so buy some tanks nothing particularly new or interesting good mix of firepower and ability to uh, take and hold ground so to get things kicked off i said well let's just buy myself an infantry battalion and we can you know go from there as you see a whole battalion is sixteen thousand odd points which is far more than we have so we needed to trim it back well first thing i did was rather than have three rifle companies we are going to bring that bring that down to a single rifle company as you can see still cannot afford it um now within the headquarters company here you can see we've got man pads scouts anti-tanks and mortars this is a couple of 107 mil mortar sections which you can see if you expand it all the way down um but uh so there is also some native um mortars within the a companies and within the weapons platoon yeah medium mortar section these are only 81 millimeter mortars but they are uh, native to the to to the rifle company, so I said, okay, fine. Let's f just for argument's sake, we'll start by pulling off the mortars. Um, I'm still far too many points over, and then I said, well, actually, let's also remove the anti-tank platoon. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't remove all your anti-tank capabilities within the scout platoon. They've actually got three tank hunters, and again within the um, rifle company, you've got some tank hunters native to them as well, and they're kind of fourth platoon. Um, and then I got to this point, and 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 uh, I was thinking, I started doing the natural thought of, okay, well, let's have a look at individual tank, because if I look at my armoured, even for a, sorry, that's artillery, if I look at my armoured for, I don't know, pick a, a tank per time, but even if you get all the way down to the, you know, platoon level, is about kind of 1,300 points, so I couldn't, aff I couldn't afford a uh, platoon. But I could obviously afford, I don't know, a handful of individual tanks. And that's obviously in one place. This is available. You can go single vehicles. Well, let's go in and, I know, pick ourselves some uh, m 62 Sure, I could get two of those or I could get maybe three of something else. But it felt very um, uh, unnatural, I suppose, we put it. In fact, I was kind of like ham-fisting these individual units, uh, tanks, is into this existing OOB. And I felt, you know what, actually, let's let's maybe have a different way of thinking it. Let's not worry about the kind of gamification and what's better and what's worse. And let's maybe just pick something that feels a bit more organic and natural and go out and have fun with it. Because after all, playing games, it's about uh, experimenting, it's about having fun. Um, you know, the, the, the opponent I'm playing, we don't take things particularly seriously. It's not about who can win at all costs. So I thought, well, hang on, let's, let's just bend the tanks, right? We'll move, move away. We'll say, well, what what can we make it work um, just with what we've got? And so I thought, well, okay, we've got the on-map stuff. Well, why don't I support it? I can get some additional artillery. Uh, I think it was just within, I can't remember how it is. Is it within the formations? And I picked up some, 
I can't remember, was it 105s? So I picked up a couple of, uh, was that medium platoon? I think it was this, if I remember correctly. Um, and you can kind of decide where you're going to house them. Doesn't really matter, but here, what I picked up. I did pick up some additional off map artillery. Uh, and that was it. And then I thought, well, otherwise, let's just stick with everything that's here. I've got a, a small amount of points left. Um, we can tweak the uh, experience motivation of the units. So especially the tank hunters, I made sure they were uh, essentially cr uh, crack, I believe. Just so they're much better at spotting, because these were going to be my ATK build. I thought, well, let's, let's have a go with the... Um, this mechanized inventory, we've got tank hunters, we've got dragon missiles, you know, that's not the worst AT capability, even if we don't have tanks in the offense, and we've got a little bit of mortars in case we come against a large, uh, you know, formation of, of soft target to try and soften them up. And that's essentially what I did, so I obviously have there's points left on this screen, because I, I did go through and um, tweak the experience and the, the leadership to make sure no one had a negative and no one had any malices down here and as they pushed up the, the vehicles and essentially that was our force it's probably not not optimum from a game perspective but i thought you know what let's just go and have fun with it and so that's what we did uh and so, so that's how i built my force so with that in mind we'll go over and and i did must i did look at the map as part of this to make sure that it was going to be feasible uh i did come up with a fairly bold strategy and how we we're going to have to uh, implement this force but it was going to be fun so let's jump over we'll have a look at the map and we'll see how we we're going to actually use these guys and so here we are this is my force on the map i think this was just as i was setting up for the first turn i see 30 minutes on the clock um i see i've got the three rifle platoons also so within i didn't mention it in the force section but within each of the platoons you have two uh squads armed with the dragons and one uh, just has the laws obviously millions of 113s. I did keep the man pads because uh, just to protect from air. I find air quite expensive in this game for effectiveness uh, but I thought I'd keep a couple of man pads because I would feel foolish if I didn't and I got pulverized from the skies. Um, and then I've got the, uh, the that's the tool sections from the fourth platoon weapons and the tool sections from our scout platoon and a couple of scouts as well. So all the lovely forces on the map. We'll talk about how we're going to use them in a minute, but let's have a look at the map. So it's fairly open. We've got a few kind of rolling hills, uh, both on this side. There's quite a big hill just there, 0 0.215.8, which sits just in front of their deployment zone. Which is always sensible in these missions, you can only be able to fire into the deployment zone. Um, and we've got a few kind of urban centers, and see so another kind of rolling hill out here on the right. So but it's kind of nothing too dominating in terms of terrain. Um, and it, also we've got sort of some woods we can play with. The kind of, I suppose, key feature is this, uh, I'm not going to call it river, stream running through, a boggy stream indeed, running through the centre of the map here, um, unfordable by vehicles. So there is a couple of crossing points here. We've got a bridge, a ford, a bridge, and a ford. Um, otherwise, you can get infantry across it, but your vehicles cannot. So if we have a look at our objectives, it's all centered on the center of this map. So essentially we need to get control of Buda Rose and get control of Zemden. Um, obviously the actual control points are the outlines around it. But that was our, our priorities, our hold towns, degrade and kill our enemy. Things um, I want to be aware of is actually, you know, sight lines from just in front of my own deployment area to just in front of his deployment area are pretty good. You know, you've got... Uh, sight lines kind of all the way uh, onto Crovis hillside. We've got a little bit of protection at the, the back here for moving around. Um, so we can kind of have a couple of different avenues of attack. Uh, but really once we're kind of out in front here, and if my opponent decides to come over the top of this hill, everyone's pretty exposed to each other. And uh, given my somewhat lack of range, I've, I've got the toes which have long range, but the infantry not so much, that's going to really uh, dictate how I want to use my forces, because I, I want to stay away from, uh, shoot, I, suppose, I want to say I stay away from long range engagements, but I want to say stay away from main long range engagements, I want to get my infantry platoon, uh, platoons in as close as possible, get them grinding down the opponent with small arms fire for infantry, toes, dragons, whatever I get my hands on, while my toes can sit at the back and pick things off. So how do we do that? Well, let me perhaps jump into the overhead view. And we can talk about, if I can remember the right map keys, where my initial setup is going to be. 
Okay. So first thing I want to do is um, visit a bit of an adage in combat mission multiplayer, which those experience may have heard already, heard already, especially when it comes to well, only when it comes to meeting engagements. And simply puts, that's get there fastest with mostest. And the theory being, if you can get into the victory point and you can hold it, then it's a lot harder for your opponent to dig you out. And uh, given that my uh, general principle is going to be, I need to get in. Uh, close, my infantry are vulnerable, you know, I want to be able to pick advantageous engagements. That's going to be uh, very true here. So really I wanted, I thought, well, straight off the bat, I want to take a platoon of, platoon of infantry each, and I want one platoon to secure Buddha rolls, and I want one platoon to secure, secure Zemdun straight away. Uh, okay, and I thought, well, obviously the big risk here is that as I send my platoon into secure Zemden, uh, he has the ability, I mean that's pretty close to his deployment zone, he can push guys straight in there, uh, potentially he can get sight lines from uh, either just over the ridge of, two, of point two one five point eight, or indeed round towards that main supply route and threaten, not actually not so much threaten you, but essentially pick off my m one one threes full of my squishy troops before we get in position and unload, and that was, that was a big fear and I thought one of the, the risks we're gonna to to take with this is we're gonna go quite hard, quite fast, be aggressive with how much territory I want to kind of grab before I dig in. Um but I thought well how am I gonna offer some protection? So I thought well actually straight off the bat I'm gonna lay down some smoke screens. So I've got one I'm gonna go on across the summit of two one five point B. And we've got one and that's gonna use 107 millimeter off map mortars and then I'm also gonna utilize the on map 381 mil mortars to lay down a smoke screen uh, essentially on the flank of the hill down towards the main supply route to to block the view into Zemden itself and facilitate our platoon securing that objectives. So then we had the uh, obviously third platoon and I want to keep them a little bit in reserve but not entirely uh, and so I'm just going to push them out to that forest on the right hand flank where uh, most of the platoons are going to be essentially held back, but I can utilize the two dragons that we do have to try and pick off some of his uh, vehicles as they maybe push around the flank of that hill in towards Zemden, uh, you know, offer that kind of potential flank. The other uh, items we have is then going to be our five toes that we brought with us. So I was going to set uh, essentially three toes in the kind of center of the field in all what positions, two just on the edge of the woods and one on a slight edge of, of a hill and on, on just outside my deployment zone. And then I was going to spin one toe quite far off to the left, that small forest at the bottom of the map, just really to guard uh, in case he sends some troops around uh, the long way from his deployment zone around through point two one two one two point five. And then the final toe was going to join infantry out into this forest on the right and provide a view to the, the uh, flank to, to supplement that dragon element of anti-tank force. And that's how we're going to set up. With the, with the tours that we're having essentially sitting in Overwatch back in the forest, I was going to utilize kind of uh, scouts or ICs or any HQ units lying around, uh, stick some of them in positions amongst the trees so they lend their eyeballs and are close enough to share that kind of information via C2. But that was initial strategy. Uh, I mean, really the plan was once I get my infantry into the towns, dismount, grab some laws, set up some dragons, and really just start to kind of ambush him as and when we can see his vehicles turn up. Simply. And uh, and that was it. So then from here, it was really just kicking out into the game and seeing uh, what my, my opponent did. There were certainly some um, risks, you know, if he tried to throw me a, a complete curveball and skip Zemdim entirely, um, that could have been pretty, dis it could be pretty disturbing if he doesn't, if he then goes somewhere else I'm not expecting. Uh, also, if he just sits back with long range, I'm not sure I'm entirely equipped to deal with that, but I'm hoping that the sight lines means my, at least my toes are going to get some first uh, shots. The, the theory being with the ones I've got seeing Overwatch is if they are unmoving, obviously if people are moving across their sight lines, then generally you get an easier time of spotting it. Uh, at least it has been the case in my experience. And so there we have it. Uh, that's that's our kind of our plan in a nutshell. So we're gonna have some Overwatch tours in these woods. Our th one one tool just on this hillock, where he can uh, spy just again side of this point. We got some scouts in the hedgerow beside him to help him out. Smoke to cover advance. An infantry charging forward on mass to see if we can get there and dig in. 
and to see how that plans out, well, we're going to have to check and see what happens in the first few turns. Interesting to hear your thoughts. I'd say they're going to be going out, uh, I'll probably put the first couple turns out in a single day, just because it tends to take a few turns for things to happen, and then we're going to release a turn today, there or not. Uh, and yeah, it be interesting to hear your thoughts, etc. as we go along things. Obviously the game will have been completed before these uh, go out. But uh, I'll still be there to uh, yeah pitch in and see what th people's thoughts are. Hope you enjoy this. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.